Hello, everyone. Welcome back to That's English. Kieran is showing me some chalk hill figures found in the English countryside. No one knows exactly where they came from, so there are many stories and legends about them. One figure is a symbol of fertility. He's known as the Cern Abbas Giant and he's the subject of today's programme. And he's stark naked. He's got no clothes on at all. As you watch, answer this question. Why is the Cern Abbas Giant a controversial monument? Artists have been carving pictures into the hillsides of England from 8000 BC through to modern times. Most of the chalk images depict running horses. But in the village of Cern Abbas, in the southwest county of Dorset, the carvers decided to draw a man. And what a man! He's called the Cern Abbas Giant. Standing erect at 55 metres tall, he is Britain's biggest chalk hill figure. He's also known as the Rude Man of Cern Abbas, for obvious reasons. The Cern Abbas Giant is England's most controversial monument, not only because of his nakedness, but also for archaeological and historical reasons. The truth is that little is known about the giant's age and identity. Robert Rhodes is a geographer working for the National Trust at Cern Abbas. Nobody really knows the age of the giant um, or who he is or even why he's here on the hillside. There are several um, theories and legends and stories as to why um, he might be here. The first is that he's a really ancient figure and he's a, a figure of Hercules, a Romano-British god, and therefore could have been here on the hillside for over 2,000 years. Um, the second theory is that he's much more modern and that he's a, a cartoon caricature of Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell was head of the British government in the mid-17th century and a strict Puritan. There is a local myth as well that he is a Danish giant and that a Danish giant came through the village one day um, and ate all the farmer's sheep. Uh, the villagers chased after him and um, killed the giant on the hillside and to ward off other giants and scare them away, they drew round his body um, to frighten other giants away. There is a pagan theory um, that he is actually a fertility symbol and um, they believe that uh, people who um, are infertile can go and conceive on the giant and um, will therefore become pregnant. Now, um, whether there is any truth in this or not, we don't know, but I have actually met people who claim to have been conceived um, on the giant. And indeed, I met a little boy who uh, was very proud of himself because his name was Cern. Maybe he was conceived on here as well. Many years ago, before he was fenced off, you were allowed to walk on him and over him. And rumour had it that if you sat on him, you would be pregnant. And um, I sat on him, and nine months later, I had a baby. Many of the theories about the giant's age come from references to him that have been found. One came in the 18th century historical journal, The Gentleman's Magazine. In a story describing the giant, it mentions his belly button, or navel, which has long since disappeared. So what do local people think about their most famous landmark? It's an unanswerable question, but I just prefer to think that it is a, an ancient monument, as opposed to anything that's uh, relatively modern, say, three, four hundred years ago. It causes quite a bit of amusement. It brings in the tourists, which is very nice, and uh, I don't think anybody minds at all. Apparently, if you move into the village and the giant doesn't like you, you move out within six months. So when we moved in, the day we moved in, I went and had a chat with him. <laughs> um, and hopefully he's accepted us. <laughs> the giant may be stark naked, but there's never been any talk of covering up his private parts, even during the puritanical Victorian years. In fact, the only time he's ever been covered up was during the Second World War, to prevent the German Luftwaffe from using him as a navigational point. Today, the Cern Abbas giant is a National Trust site, 
So, while we may not know his origin, we can be certain that the giant, and his private parts, will be protected for generations to come. Is it safe to look yet? She's a little bit shy. Did you answer the question, why is the CERN Abbas giant a controversial monument? The CERN Abbas giant is England's most controversial monument, not only because of his nakedness, but also for archaeological and historical reasons. The truth is that little is known about the giant's age and identity. He's controversial because he is naked. <laughs> and also because not a lot is known about his age or identity. Now, let's change the subject. Samantha, who's your favourite British author? Ooh, I like anything by Ruth Rendell. She's a brilliant crime writer. Hmm. We asked our international friends, who are some of the greatest writers in your country? What do or did they write about? We have quite a strong history of writing in New Zealand. My favourites are writers such as Catherine Mansfield, who was a late 19th century, early 20th century writer, and more recently, Kerry Holm. And Kerry won the Booker Prize for her book, The Bone People, which is about Maori and European culture in New Zealand. I can think of two. One would be Jack Kerouac, who wrote On the Road. He represented the beat generation in America, the search for independence and freedom of expression. And the second would be Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, who helped, uh, who, who was a catalyst in the abolition of slavery. I can think of two great Canadian writers. One is Alice Munro, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2013. And the other is Al M. Montgomery, who wrote Anne of Green Gables in 1908. Every little girl's probably read that book. Two of the most loved writers in Australia would have to be Banjo Patterson and Henry Lawson. They both wrote about the outlaws, the Australian settlers and the Australian outback. Every child would know the words to Walsing Matilda, one of Banjo Patterson's famous poems. Robert Burns, um, Rabbi Burns, as we know him, he's a very famous poet and he wrote a whole poem about haggis. Um, so he's very popular. So, Robert Burns wrote a poem about haggis, a Scottish dish made from sheep's insides. It goes like this. Fair and full is your honest jolly face, great chieftain of the sausage race. Above them all you take your place, stomach, tripe or intestines. Well, you are worthy of a grace. <laughs> now it's time to join Aidan on his travels around Ireland. Today he's back in Dublin, the home of many famous Irish writers. Here's the question for you. Which Irish writer had a controversial personal life? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Dublin. On this visit, we're going to learn about some of Ireland's most well-known writers. The Dublin Writers Museum was opened in 1991. It was established to promote interest in Irish literature and tell people about the lives and works of Irish writers. Let's take a look. I'm here with Robert Nicholson from Falcha, Ireland, the National Tourism Development Authority. Robert works as curator here. Hello, Robert. Hello. Thanks for talking to me. Robert, what writers do you have represented here at the museum? We go way back to early times, beginning, I suppose, with Jonathan Swift. You have Bram Stoker, whom a lot of people didn't think was Irish. There's Oscar Wilde, George Bernard Shaw, William Butler Yeats, James Joyce, of course. Samuel Beckett, Brendan Behan. We mainly, we principally feature writers who are already dead, but we're already collecting portraits of living people, like, for example, Edna O'Brien, J.P. Dunleavy, and others. So the collection continues to grow. 
And Ireland has a great tradition of storytelling. Do you think this tradition has inspired Irish literature? Oh, very definitely. <clears throat> I think if you go back again to very early times, you have a small country, very confined, and there are just a few great legends, and they keep telling the same stories. So the emphasis is on finding new ways to tell the story. Thanks very much for talking to us, Robert. Thanks. This is number one, Marion Square, childhood home of Oscar Wilde. Wilde's parents were lifelong Irish nationalists, as was Wilde himself. His novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray, and his play, The Importance of Being Earnest, are among the great literary masterpieces of the late Victorian period. Oscar Wilde was also remembered for his personal life. He was famously imprisoned in England for being a homosexual. This is James Joyce. His most famous work is probably Ulysses. This experimental novel follows the lives of two characters on a single day as they travel around Dublin. This is Sandy Cove, an area in the south of Dublin overlooking the Irish Sea. I'm here at the James Joyce Tower. I'm here with James Houlihan at the James Joyce Tower and Museum. Hello, James. Hi, Aidan. Hi. Um, what was James Joyce's relationship to the tower? Well, James Joyce actually only stayed here for six nights, uh, but he used the tower and the characters who were with him during those six nights as the basis for the opening chapter of his famous masterpiece, Ulysses. And what features of the tower are mentioned in Ulysses? Well, James Joyce was famous for taking locations and putting them into his novels and he describes them very beautifully. And he describes, for example, this room we're in beautifully. He describes the slanted windows here, for example. Thanks for talking to us, James. Thank you, Lady. From the top of the tower, the landscape and views around are striking and dramatic. Certainly a source of inspiration. So I'll leave you with a few words from Ulysses. Think you're escaping and run into yourself. Longest way round is the shortest way home. See you next time back in Galway. If I were surrounded by beautiful Irish landscapes, I might be inspired to write a novel. Uh, mm, yes, well, uh, shall we take a look at our question? Which Irish writer had a controversial personal life? Oscar Wilde was also remembered for his personal life. He was famously imprisoned in England for being a homosexual. The answer is Oscar Wilde, because he was put in prison for being a homosexual or gay. Well, today's videos were interesting, weren't they? Uh, they certainly were. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.